Hey folks, Belgrade Beat on the streets of Belgrade once again and it is raining today and I was riding my bicycle back from Ada. Um, I've been out for about five hours or something just riding around the city, ended up on Ada and it just started spitting rain so I ended up stopping here at the Belgrade waterfront um, sort of construction project where, well, they're doing it. So I wanted to uh, reflect uh, while I get wet at the waterfront uh, with the rain. You know, it looks like it's going to pass shortly because you got blue skies over there. How has the perception of this uh, sort of like project changed over the last little while? And what does this mean for the future of our city of Belgrade? And let's just backtrack. When they first started like building this thing a couple years ago, there was a lot of outrage among, I guess, urban Belgradians that um, this was some cheesy, tacky project that would uh, attract a bunch of new money, prioritize, you know, rich people over citizens of the city who may, you know, have jobs that wouldn't even allow them to live here and stuff like that. So there were lots of protests. There were lots of, you know, sort of outpourings of outrage and all that stuff. And, and basically, yeah. The government went ahead and did it anyway and so they built it now there's some of these buildings like this one here is open as a residential building they're building a big mall over there that's going to be the big tower over there that they're building and it seems like this is happening and it seems like i mean i just tell i strange thing is i've heard two or three times while passing through this neighborhood russian as a language spoken so it seems like russian people are investing in this place and certainly arabs are investing in this place but where does that leave ordinary serbians who you know, trying to make it in this life and see this as like a gentrification of their city that will leave them behind or something like that. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Tell me in the comments what you think of if you're an old school Belgradian person and all that stuff. How do you think of this project at this point now that they're doing it? Now that you've seen some of the cafes that are open, some of the people, types of people that are like... Yeah, they've been building it for like four years now, I think. I'm lost track of the whole thing, but... Yeah, what do you think? I mean, is it going to attract the wrong type of people to Belgrade? Is it going to help the um, city attract more investment? And what do you think? Because, you know, me, I'm a little bit weird. I'm from Canada, have a sort of upper middle class background, and I, I would not be caught dead at this point in my life living in a place like this because I would always prefer a neighborhood with a lot more soul, like um, where I live now in the city center, basically. You know, because there's just so much more soul. Um, if I wanted to live in a place like this, I could easily find a condominium in my birth city of Toronto and, you know, it would be a lot more the same than the difference, which is I live in Belgrade because of this soul, of this culture, of this old city that, you know, it's rough around the edges, it's dirty, it, but it's majestic, it's elegant, it's got like a little bit of everything, you know, a little bit of tradition, a little bit of the future built into it, a little bit of optimism, a little bit of pessimism, a little bit of all this real sort of stuff that you see on a daily basis, these feelings, these emotions and all this stuff. So what does this represent? This represents the sort of Dubaiification of Belgrade. This represents a place um, where people are chasing that sort of uh, new money aspiration, sort of like, get rich and buy an apartment in a place like this and sterile existence and you know there's room for people like that in the city and I'm glad they're making a place for them. They already have the projects across the river in Novi Belgrad that were pretty much about like that, that Belleville place that they built yeah, a while ago and you know for people who want that sort of thing there is this. For people who want the cool, well they took a huge chunk out of the cool when they started slicing up Savamala to build this place. So that was sad, and that's mostly what people were protesting about. But, um, so I guess there's this feeling that no matter how hard you work in Serbia, you might never be able to afford to live in some here and that in some apartment here, and, and that everybody um, who could afford to live in here is some sort of, you know, criminal or whatever, foreigner or, you know, at the very least, somebody taking foreign income. So, me working in the IT industry globally, um, I can tell you that I'm doing honest work. And the people that, you know, the company 
my company finds jobs for. Basically, we find jobs people they can work online. They can work those jobs online, and it's with companies in the U.S. and U.K. And we, you know, make the deal and um, get them going on that sort of thing. And well, we're doing honest work. IT is an honest business. So, if you think that you don't have opportunity, opportunities in the, from this country, living in this country, to actually um, improve your life, then you obviously haven't looked into the booming IT sector in this country and the multitude of different opportunities, whether you want to be a computer programmer or somebody managing computer programmers, project manager, um, IT support technician, and various different things. That's the sort of thing to get into. If you're not that into tech, well, you might be screwed, but there's a future in this country. And you also see lots of people coming and succeeding from smaller towns in Serbia with various food brands and linking, you know, I don't know. What I'm saying is like, don't look at this shit as a metaphor for what's wrong with um, the country and why you can't get ahead in life. Look in your own head and what you're not doing that other people are doing to get ahead, like going into the IT industry. Now, I would not want to live in a place like this. I could probably afford it right now. You know, because I'm quite successful at this point. And I could probably, you know, buy one of these places and get a mortgage to live in here. But that's not me. That's not me. I, st I still haven't decided that this is the place I want to settle down for the rest of my life or anything like that. So, what to do about that? Well, nothing. But I just happen to be biking through here and standing here this, this time. And, yeah, I mean, but, you know, they're doing it. And they've opened up some cafes on the river there. They're quite sterile. Not my scene. I prefer more alternative vibes. I prefer more underground culture. Something with a little bit more soul and um, <laughs> sophistication even. You know, I'm not into like the elegance, like the fancy watches, um, the fancy cars and all that stuff. That's not my way. You know, there's a difference between that sort of vulgar sort of showing off and and people who want to be successful and make money just so they can enrich their lives and enrich the lives of people around them. Some of the richest people that I know, like I know one billionaire, billionaire, you wouldn't know it by the way he's dressed. He's not trying to impress you. He just happened to get rich by doing, you know, his stuff. And the more you get secure in the fact that you're living a rich life, both culturally and financially, then the less you need to show it off. It's all these people who need to make money and show it off because they have some sort of deep-rooted insecurity that they need to like show that there's some sort of you know rich person better than you with their fancier car than you and their uh, woman with more ins expensive implants than your woman and all that stuff um, so those are the sorts of people who are going to be gravitated to this place and well power to them if they want to live here you know, I might come once in a while here for a bike ride, the atmosphere by the river, it's interesting. I like going between different scenes. I like understanding what, how those people think. How the people who think that their next bit of happiness is gonna be the next 40,000 euro watch that they buy. You know, I know, I know people like that and, you know, I can relate on some levels, but on some levels, it's not my scene. What I do relate in, in is that money is important in life. It's important to make money, it's important to, um, be on top of yourself financially and in terms of discipline and work and success. Um, but in the end, I've never been in a situation where there was any scarcity in my life, where there was any actual poverty that affected me. So I would say that the sort of rat race, top of the rat race that this place represents does not attract me because, well, I've always been secure financially, and once you have that level, you try to actually look for places that have a lot more soul than this. So, yeah. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below about the Belgrade Waterfront Project. And, I mean, would you ever consider living here? Do you know anybody who wants to live here? Um, what's the effect this is going to have on the city, its economy, uh, foreign investment, and um, this just the general vibe of um, how you know the city works what do you think's gonna happen and um tell me your thoughts let's have some discussion about this thanks a lot um the rain is dying down a bit now i think i'm gonna make it to the next next leg of the journey back home so i'll catch you guys later let me know what you think in the comments and if you like this video you haven't and you haven't subscribed you can subscribe right now subscribe all right guys catch you later bye